Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to You Make the Call. This is the June 2024 edition. In You Make the Call, what happens is I show you one slide with two images, and we try to make the best diagnosis, and then we discuss it. So it's kind of a simple, but it's an interesting way of thinking about things. And let's get started. In this patient with an incidental finding, you see a mass in the tail of the pancreas. It looks solid, it looks vascular, so the first thing that comes to my mind is going to be a neuroendocrine tumor. It's not the look of an adenocarcinoma, it's not the look of a mucinous cystic neoplasm, a serous cyst adenoma, in most cases, which tend to be cystic. But it's important to recognize one of the tumors that is vascular in the pancreas, beyond neuroendocrine tumor, is a solid serous cyst adenoma, and it can look very similar. It can be very challenging. So what's your best diagnosis? We went through a couple choices. It's not going to be, as we said, an adenocarcinoma. It's not going to be a metastasis. The kidneys look okay. If the patient did have a renal cell carcinoma, you can get metastatic disease to the pancreas, which is typically vascular, but usually it's multiple. So what's it going to be? Well, the answer was a solid serous cyst adenoma. About 3% of serous cyst adenomas are solid, the majority of cystic with variable appearances, including central coarse calcification. And here's just a few more images. You can see how it washes out as we go from arterial to venous phase imaging. You can see it very nicely here on the coronal view, a nice solid mass. Again, I would have gone with neuroendocrine first, but we are seeing these more commonly. Here it is very nicely shown on the cinematic rendering. Just a really great case. What about this patient? Suspected appendicitis. Well, there is some inflammation in the right lower quadrant, and there's a solid mass there. This is a female. This also what looks like bladder, I can tell you, if you had all the images, the bladder was pushed down. This is a cystic lesion that's been there for a while, felt to be perhaps a cyst off the left ovary. That's a possibility. And then we have this solid mass here. I have an old scan from a year ago, and I'll tell you that solid mass wasn't there. It looks like it's ovarian in nature, but it's a young female, a lot of pain. What could this be? Well, you could say, yes, it's appendiceal abscess, but it looks too solid. It could be a solid tumor off small bowel, like a gist. That would be a possibility. Again, two images make it difficult. I'll tell you the bowel looked good. So when I thought about this case, because it was an acute abdomen um, and I didn't see an appendicitis, the right colon looked good, the distal bowel looked good, I assumed it had to be ovary. But I had an old skin where there was no ovarian mass and it wasn't that long ago. And so the right diagnosis was it was the right ovary, but it was now enlarged with an acute abdomen and inflammation. And this is a classic appearance of torsion of the right ovary. Patient had uh, the ovary untwisted. They did not need to remove it at the time of surgery. Ovarian torsion is really a challenging case. Here's a few more images in this patient. You can see the appendix nicely. Um, you could see on the coronal views, the cystic mass, the solid mass, which was the torsed ovary and the appendix. A really, really nice uh, and very, very interesting case. This patient has chest pain. What's the best diagnosis? Well, what you see is collaterals in the chest wall. You also see multiple mediastinal collaterals, but you don't see the superior vena cava. This patient's SVC was occluded. Now, there are many reasons. You can have a tumor infiltrating. I don't see a tumor, so that's going to be unlikely. The most likely cause, you can see what looks like a little calcification here. Patients do have, at times, um, lesions placed due to catheters, particularly patients with uh, long-standing medical histories, renal disease, different type of oncology patients, and you can get SVC occlusion, then you have collaterals in the mediastinum, and you also see that the collaterals can extend down the internal mammary artery, which you can see over here, and the collaterals can also 
involve uh, other areas, including the chest wall and the abdominal wall. So here's a few more images of that. You can see nicely here, again, SVC occlusion, the collaterals that are in the cinematic rendering, the internal mammaries are dilated, particularly on the right side, the collaterals and the subcutaneous tissues in the patient's chest wall. And again, another set of images showing you very nicely the collaterals. And here's just a typical schematic draw drawing showing you what happens when you have SVC occlusion, collaterals from the internal mammary to the paravertebral vessels to the subcutaneous tissues in the chest wall and abdominal wall all nicely can be involved. Here's a patient who's short of breath. Well, you're thinking PE, but what you actually see is a filling defect in descending aorta. And what could this be? Well, it looks like it's not a flow-related artifact. It's a clot. Now, theoretically, it also could be a tumor, right? But it's very smooth, so it looks like a clot. This was an interesting patient because this patient had a history of a sarcoma. Sarcomas can occasionally give intravascular metastasis. It's rare. Don't get me wrong. Usually a clot is the most common thing. But you need to think about metastasis as well. These lesions are very worrisome because these can lead to a breakup of the lesion, which could give you emboli to the brain, to the lower extremities, to any of the organs. And so, your diagnosis, please. Well, I mentioned about metastatic disease, and this indeed was a metastasis. Most commonly, it's going to be thrombus. It can be small. You may follow it. You may go in and um, remove it uh, with your vascular team because, again, any place these thrombi go, or tumors surely, but thrombi are going to be bad. Good example of showing it to you on the uh, volume rendering and showing it to you very nicely here on the um, cinematic rendering and here as well. So just really a very nice way of looking inside the vessel. We're all trained to look at the pulmonary emboli, looking in the pulmonary arteries. Take a look also at the aorta. It's a very, very important thing to look at. This patient presents with suspected small bowel obstruction. And what's going on? Well, you can see this dilated small bowel. So we're thinking about obstruction. But a key finding here is to look at the pancreas. Look how the pancreas basically is fatty replaced. Now, this patient was not old, whatever that means. patient was in their 30s. Now, you can have fatty replacement with aging. You can have fatty replacement with diabetes, prior trauma. It can be focal or diffuse. Here, it's very diffuse. And I'm talking about dilated bowel and pancreas. Now, I'm not giving you all of the images, so you got to say to yourself, how do you put these two together? Maybe it's coincidental the patient has fatty infiltration of the pancreas and has a small bowel obstruction. But if you had all the images, and so this is unfair, you would realize the patient has fatty replacement of the pancreas because the patient had cystic fibrosis, and then it has dilated bowel, and as you scan downward, the bowel is dilated and you follow it down. Look how dilated these bowel loops are, small bowel. But then you see small bowel in the right lower quadrant which has a lot of stool within it. And then you ask yourself, what gives you stool in the small bowel? That's usually due to malabsorption. And just cystic fibrosis alone can give you this feces sign where you have lots of feces and it creates an obstructive process. Remember, we typically talk about small bowel obstruction and the feces sign leading you directly to the site of obstruction, which was the case here of the distal small bowel. So a beautiful example, putting two and two together, fatty pancreas, dilated bowel, feces sign, cystic fibrosis. What a terrific case. What about this patient? There's a mass in the pancreas right in the body. It's large. There's atrophy of the tail of the pancreas. This mass is somewhat cystic. When you look at it, you can say, well, could this be an adenocarcinoma? 
Now, it could be, at least in theory, the gland is atrophic distally, but you don't see a dilated duct. And then you more, you look at this lesion, it has cystic components into it. So I'm thinking about a large cystic lesion. Now, we likely say that serous cyst adenomas don't have pancreatic duct dilatation and so get, uh, do not get distal atrophy, but that's not the case. They can get dust, they can get dust, they can get distal atrophy and dilated duct. And so when you look at this, you're thinking about serous cyst adenoma. Great location for an MCN, but MCNs are more cystic, not so solid. I don't like adenocarcinoma. Uh, a SPEN tumor can look like almost anything if it was a younger female. So you're thinking about those possibilities, and this indeed was a serous cyst adenoma. Serous cyst adenomas are large, typically don't obstruct the duct, more common in the head, but can be in this location as well. You can see in the coronal views the cystic components especially well. And you could see them also very well on the cinematic rendering. So again, serous cyst adenoma. We do see some really unusual serous cyst adenomas at times when they're more solid than cystic. So it's always something that's really, really good to think about. In this case, what are we dealing with? There's a cystic lesion in the pancreas. In the body, it looks like it's in the gland and it looks a little bit more extrinsic as we go toward the distal body and tail. It has septations and thickening. Could be an MCN, could be an IPMN, but then you might worry about the septations. Could this be a um, malignant IPMN or at least a high-grade dysplasia? You could think about something like a lymphopathelial cyst, which typically hang off the pancreatic gland. But here, the part more in the body doesn't really seem like it hangs off the gland. And usually you don't see septations in lymphopathelial cysts, so I don't like that really well. This does not fit into the neuroendocrine tumor, obviously. MCN, we commented on before in other cases. Body of the pancreas has septations. Often well-defined, you can see a dilated duct, but not necessarily, and in this case, we don't see a dilated duct. So what are we thinking about? This was an IPMN with high-grade dysplasia. Again, when you see septations or nodularity in IPMNs, you have to tissue sample them because that could be the earliest sign, sometimes and more times than not, with a single septation like this. You could think about that it's a low-grade dysplasia. I guess here the issue was the size of the lesion, but this was high-grade dysplasia. It actually is better seen when you look at the coronal views here or here as well. So really, what I would say is a difficult case and makes you really think about that you need to be very careful when you're looking at these type of lesions. This patient had abdominal pain. There's a large calcified cystic lesion. In theory, it could be coming off the stomach like a, um, what would you think about? You know, it's just tumor. They can calcify. It could be a mesenteric cyst with calcification. Could be a pancreatic cyst or some sort of cystic pancreatic tumor with calcification. Now, we talk about calcifications in serous cyst adenomas. They're usually central. We talk about SPEN often peripheral, but not 360. We talk about MCNs do have calcifications, often irregular. You also need to think about pseudocysts, right? An old pseudocyst may be related to trauma, everything related to trauma in the spleen, in the kidney, in the adrenal, in the liver, in the pancreas can calcify. So that's a possibility. So what's our best bet here? This was resected. This was a calcified pseudocyst from an episode of pancreatitis 30 years earlier. Now, who knows? Maybe the pancreatitis was trauma-related, but it's unusual to see pseudocysts of the pancreas calcify. If you see calcification is usually focal, it's not to the extent we see here. So just a really, really nice example of a calcified pseudocyst. Here you can see it again. Look how I um, do the MIP imaging. It displaces the vessels. There's not significant collaterals. It kind of looks like a globe, right? It looks like the world from above.
And here it is with volume rendering, just a really nice case. This was an incidental finding, and again, you only have two images, so I have to be a little bit helpful, because this could be off the liver, unlikely, because there's good planes on the second image, but possible. Could be off the kidney, a big cyst in the upper pole, or cystic lesion, or could be from the adrenal gland, and I'll tell you it's adrenal. So then you could say, well, adrenal cyst, well-defined water density, sharply marginated. It could be an old hemorrhage, though truthfully with old hemorrhage, you like to think that it's not so perfectly water density. There's sometimes thickened walls or there's higher density regions. With uh, adrenal, you also have to think about things like lymphangiomas or neurogenic type tumors as well as possibilities. And when you have to answer the question, what could this be? This ended up being a lymphangioma of the adrenal gland. Again, most of the time, I'll be honest, I look at this case, I'm saying adrenal cyst, water density well-defined. You can see a faint calcification that could make you think about an old hemorrhage, but again, it's too homogeneous in my mind for that. Lymphangiomas do occur, they're smooth, they can have calcification, but they're usually not so perfect water density. So just a really nice case. One would have to admit in looking at this case that you would have been thinking all along that this is likely a benign lesion. What about this one? Looks like a mass of the pancreas. Well-defined solid, but what's a little unusual, well, we do see a little bit of pancreatic duct dilatation, but there's no common duct dilatation. If this is a pancreatic mass, I don't think it's an adenocarcinoma. I might think about uh, a solid serous cystadenoma, I might think about a spen tumor. Those are good possibilities. We have been noted to be uh, tricked at times. And one of the lesions that occurs in this region is a neurogenic tumor. And it's a peripancreatic schwannoma. It actually arose off the gland. Uh, it's one of the things, schwannomas can be very smooth and be solid. They can occur in the gland or near the gland. They're pretty, pretty rare. Here it is very nicely on the volume rendering. Look how sharply marginated the lesion is. You can see as you go to venous, there's also a little bit of cystic component. That is not uncommon with neurogenic tumors. Now with neurogenic tumors like a schwannoma, they're fairly homogeneous. They're not typically very vascular. It's a really wonderful case. We've seen maybe a half a dozen of these. Round, smooth, great location. It's going to be resected regardless. might be biopsied, but it is one of the lesions that can occur in this location. And that's it. Those are our latest and greatest set of cases. Um, you make the call again two images, think about it, differential. It's not always the final answer that matters. It's how you think about it and how you manage to work up the patient. And with that, I thank you for your attention. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.